we are innately, intrinsically, biologically mandated to be empathic. The baby coming out of the womb is expecting to meet empathic adults who know what they're doing, who live in a balanced way as part of the earth, as part of the nature, as part of the habitat. That's what the baby from the womb is expecting because if you think about it, inside the womb that's what they are living. They're living completely connected to their mother, empathetically connected. They are growing inside the womb, that is their world. All their nourishment needs are being met. They're learning as they grow in the womb. We now know that this consciousness of babies is much greater than had been uh, assumed before. And we know that the birth experience and infancy is a continuous experiential learning. It's a process where the empathy that they had and felt and experienced as um, in the womb, as part of the mother, and the mother is part of themselves, that empathetic learning has to continue once they are outside the womb as a separate person. And there are certain biological cues that have to be in place to enable that empathic learning to happen. And we know from much science, from perinatal studies, postnatal studies, from neuroscience, from biochemistry, from developmental science, that if those cues are missing, then the child will not learn empathy as needed and that there is a direct link between the disruption of the child-mother bonding processes as mandated by nature and the emergence of violence and hierarchy and abuse within society. So my message is twofold. is that if we want to see an end to abuse, we have to address the survivors of abuse and give them the space to tell the truth of their experience stories and we must listen to it and accept that truth and face it and that will help them recover and then we must look at the practices within our society that disrupt the natural empathic man biologically mandated processes and those twofold steps are very very important 